American billionaire hedge fund manager Julian Robertson developed a strong affinity for New Zealand over his life and on his death, a gift of 15 paintings he and wife Josie Robertson had lovingly collected was gifted to the Auckland Art Gallery. The works form part of a new exhibition called The Robertson Gift, Path Through Modernity, which is opening this week. I spoke to gallery director Kirsten Lacey and asked her about the history of the relationship between New Zealand, the gallery and the Robertsons. The story of Julian and Josie Robertson and their relationship to New Zealand goes back 45 years. First they came for a summer vacation in 1978, fell in love with New Zealand and its countryside and decided to uh, set up some investment here, largely in agriculture and following in luxury lodges and, and other kinds of endeavours, the wine industry. And then in 2006, they decided to lend a small number of paintings, but the largest number of paintings they'd ever lent from their private collection to an institution. To us here at the Auckland Art Gallery, but also it went to Wellington and was exhibited at Te Papa and, um, Following that um, was actually Tamariki, who engaged with the works, particularly one of the Picasso portraits in this exhibition, and made letters and paintings inspired by the works that they saw. And just the amazing kind of sense of art as a playground for our senses and for how we experience the world and the gallery packaged up these letters and these paintings from children and sent them to Julian and Josie Robertson. And that led to them choosing the Auckland Art Gallery uh, as the recipient for this gift. So in 2009, we exhibited a small number of works. And then in 2011, the entire suite of the promised gift was exhibited when the building reopened. In this exhibition that we're in, we're showcasing the gift, which is 15 paintings, largely, by 11 of the most important, really, European modern painters um, of the 20th century, um, amongst other works in the collection as well. So you start to see the whole history of 20th century modernism, from Impressionism, Post-Impressionism, Fauvism, Abstraction, uh, surrealism, it's all on show in Paths to Modernity. Josie did most of the advising and the collecting, is my understanding, and bought works to Julian for his appreciation, but also uh, to encourage and expand his appreciation of art. And they were looking at uh, works throughout the 20th century that represented innovations in art throughout those decades. Uh, so it's quite broad. Um, it's right through the late 1800s with the um, early Monet, Duran works right through to the 1960s when you see um, the Matisse, uh, later works by Matisse and so on. Um, but really it, they're focused on European modernism in a very uh, focused way really. The man I met was not the owner of the largest hedge fund in the world. The man I met was a husband, keeping his memory of his life alive by looking at the works that they loved together. They called these works uh, their painted children, if you like. And I, what I saw was a man that really wanted these works to go somewhere where they would be as loved as Josie and he had loved them. Um, and so it was a very gentle, soft man who was quite clear about what he wanted with, his, um, with the gift um, and uh, was really set at, at peace, I guess, I felt, um, in terms of their decision uh, around these works, their painted children. Julian was very organised. So actually, you know, on his passing, we were notified very quickly by the executors. Um, and we sent, uh, as a conservator and a registrar from the gallery to New York, where they 
did what they could to consolidate the works for travel, travelling, making sure the crating and packaging was appropriate, and then literally couriering the works back in a number of consignments uh, by air freight to New Zealand. And then once they're here, our um, senior conservator, um, head of conservation, Sarah Hillary, and her team uh, began to assess the works, assess the frames, and we were able to photograph, document um, all of the works. So on the back of the paintings, you'll see a whole lot of information that tells us about their exhibition history, where they've travelled in the past as well. So there's been an enormous amount of research undertaken by the curatorial team and the conservation team since we took receipt of the gift about 12 months ago, where we've been able to piece together um, a lot of information about where these works have been shown over the years and where they've, yeah, where they've travelled. What the gift of Julian and Josie uh, demonstrates, I think, to our business community, but really the whole community, is the power of bequesting. And letting an institution know about your intentions around a bequest during your life, because we've been able to celebrate this um, with the family and with Julian and, and and Josie when she was alive, um, over their end of life and with them, they could see the impact that this gift was, was having in New Zealand and would have um, you know, in years ahead uh, after them. It's not always a billionaire that makes a uh, transformative gift to an institution. There's often people that may have no um, surviving children to give their lives. Um, savings to at the end of life, but if they let us know of their intention to give to the gallery, we're able to have a relationship with them and celebrate the impact of that giving um, towards the end of life. So we have people, for example, that might give to home that they've lived in their entire life, not necessarily um, well-off individuals, but their property might be valuable. That can be hugely transformative to the collection or the work that we do. Um, and also I think for an individual preparing for end of life, how wonderful it is to see your impact and your legacy beyond your life mm. as you're preparing for end of life. So bequesting is a really beautiful way to make a contribution. To support our award-winning independent journalism, subscribe to nbr.co.nz.